Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports, and wrestling, of course. As always, I'm your host, Peter Meliotis. On Twitter, I go as PD Beats. Really excited to be joined by a superstar from Ring of Honor. We're with Beer City Bruiser. Beer City Bruiser, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. So, uh, you know, the wrestling world's pretty crazy. A lot of things go on, uh, especially, you know, with, you know, the in the indies as well. What have you been up to specifically lately? Uh, just been doing a lot of Ring of Honor dates. I've uh, been winding down my indie dates. Um, I just re-signed with Ring of Honor mm-hmm. um, under an exclusive deal. Awesome. Where I'll be with, with just them for the next year. Great. So, just been keeping busy wrestling. <laughs> Absolutely. And how did you get into wrestling? What was the one thing that uh, made you want to become a wrestler? I ask a lot of people this, but I always get different answers. So, like, what, dro- what drove you into wanting to be a professional wrestler? Uh, when I was seven years old, uh, my uncle took me to, you know, like they have those local county fairs and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, I was up in Merrill, Wisconsin, and uh, AWA Wrestling was there. And my uncle's a big wrestling fan, so he took me. And um, the main event was supposed to be Abdul the Butcher versus Bruiser Brody. Uh, but Abdul the Butcher canceled. So to fill in his spot was uh, Stan Hansen versus Bruiser Brody. Okay. And they brawled right past me. And I remember Brody standing next to me, like, kind of looking down at me. And, and I just, I was hooked. Like, I thought it was the greatest thing ever because, you know, here's Brody, who to me was, like, 20 feet tall and covered in blood. And I looked at my uncle and I went, this is amazing. And uh, I just started, like, doing research and looking for all the wrestling I could get. You know, where I grew up, we had WWF all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, we had AWA all the time because I'm from Milwaukee. But uh, for my pursuit of trying to find Brody, you know, I found Japanese wrestling. I found uh, Devon Eriks down in Texas. I found Bill Watts. I found Mid-Atlantic out in uh, North Carolina and stuff. And I just kind of took it from there. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you're a bigger guy too. And that's one of the things I I had um, Moose, uh, who's on Impact Wrestling and was previously with Ring of Honor. I've had him on the show. And we had a chat about um, this kind of, the, the the big man in wrestling and there's like two kinds of like big men in terms of their style there's the guys like uh moose or like donovan dijack or like the big guys that do a lot of crazy you know acrobatic things from time to time but then there's the guys like yourself and Braun Strowman, just like the big kind of bruiser kind of big guy what do you think about how wrestling is kind of transformed over the years with like the big bruiser like like yourself and then the big guys like Rod Strowman. I just want your opinion because then you also have really big guys doing crazy acrobatic things. So there's been a shift, no? Oh, yeah. Um, I think the shift was because if you look at the 80s, it was all about like if you go in the 70s, it was it, they didn't care what you look like. They just want tough guys. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you look at more, the crusher from Milwaukee, I mean, or, or Dick the Bruiser or whatever. You didn't you didn't want to meet those guys in a bar and piss them off. Like what they were on camera is what they were in real life. Then you got to the 80s, and it was kind of like they wanted all the body guys, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted everyone to look, you know, like a steroided, jacked-up freak, you know. You get into the 2000s, and it's kind of like the little guy took over. The big push for the cruiserweights and the flippy guys and uh, the, the very talented acrobatic style. Um, so the big guys, in order for us to be relevant again, we had to show we can go with the style, you know. Um so we had to start as big guys. You had to kind of make that transformation where, yeah, you're a big, strong guy, but you have to be athletic too. Yeah. You know, um, and, I, and I like it. I, I think it's great because I love doing stuff in the ring. And after I get done, people walking up going, oh, my God, like we didn't expect, you know, you to go to the top rope and do that, you know, and it's 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 always cool to show something that's not expected of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's really cool. And it, it's one of those things where – I mean, wrestling, in my opinion, is the best like form of entertainment out there. It's unbelievable. There's so much involved, whether it's the kind of the storyline aspect of things and then in and outside the ring. What is your favorite thing about being a professional wrestler? 
Uh, I love the reaction from the crowd. I love going out and, and telling a story, um, whether it be part of a storyline or just a, a one one match thing. You know, um, I, I love telling the story. I love getting the reaction from fans, whether I'm a, a baby face, a good guy, or the heel, a bad guy. I love getting that reaction. Um, I just wrestled Cody Rhodes. Um, well, Cody, he's, he's going to legally be called um, in Oklahoma City. It was a one night thing. There was no storyline behind it. There was no um, build up to it. it. We started it with a promo, um, and then we told the story in the ring, and and afterwards, just the crowd reaction. Like that's what I love about wrestling. You know, um, you can get people to come to a wrestling show, and for two to three hours, they forget about real life, and they're just sucked into to what's going on in the show. And if I can be a part of that, if, if for the you know, eight to 25 minutes I'm in the ring, they're not thinking about real life. They're just reacting emotionally to what I'm doing. That's the best part of wrestling. I find it very interesting. You talked about, you know, what, eight minutes or 25 minutes. I want to know. I mean, you know, you look at matches that are like 25 minutes, but then you look at some matches that are like squashes or like four or five minute matches. What do you find is actually harder, the long, uh, the longer matches or the shorter matches? Because... I, I think from my perspective, because let's say it's a small match, uh, like, a, like a really short match, it's like four or five minutes, you have to kind of pick and choose the, what's going to happen in the match. Whereas if it's like a 25 minute match, you can kind of plan it more and put more things in there and there's more kind of leeway. Do you like, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, is that like have to do with anything? Like, isn't it harder sometimes? I mean, unless you're just going in there doing your, your finishing move and getting out there, but it's like, you have five minutes, right? You got to make it count. Yeah. But, but five minutes in wrestling is a long time. Like you hear five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, but then when you're in the ring, five minutes, you know, could be a really long time. Um, I, I, when we do our TV matches and stuff, they range from three minutes to, to I think the longest I've been in is like a 15 minute TV match. And you usually have breaks in there. Cause they tell you when, you know, commercial break and stuff like that. The, the little three minute matches, you plan something. And by the time you're out there, it's like, Oh my God, we're almost done. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it, it's, it's crazy. Then when you do squash matches, I find squash matches actually to be harder than just regular matches. Because with a squash match, I don't want to go out there and just beat this guy up and, and leave him laying and that's it. Because then who did I beat? I want to go out there and I want to have this guy at least have a chance uh, of beating me so that the fans will think, oh, my God, there's an opportunity for this guy to beat me. So that way when I beat him, it, it means something. But if I only got three minutes, I still got to get my stuff in to keep my character relevant. You know, I still got to do what I was told from, from the office and stuff like that. Mm hmm but I want to make this guy relevant. So you only have three minutes to play with that. That's, that's the hard one. <laughs> I'm sure you've been on both ends, right? You've squashed, but you've also been squashed. Yeah. Um, what do you like? What, what's, what's harder? Uh, being the guy squashing a guy. Really? Uh, because, yeah, because you gotta, you're pretty much when we do, when we do matches like that, it's always a local talent. So, you know, you got to look at the guy and go, okay, well, here's my stuff that I do. Um, what do you do? And then you got to figure out, because you probably just met this guy, you know, where like they know you from TV and whatnot. So it's like, okay, what do you do and how can I fit, fit that into what I do? And let's make it gel together to make it, me you know, make sense. Because you mm -hmm. don't want to go into a wrestling match and have nothing make sense because you'll lose fans that way. But you are know? you able like, even to rehearsal? Rehearse? Probably no, not, right? you, I don't see. I don't. I don't like rehearsing matches. I, 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 I don't like going out there and like doing matches beforehand because I want that natural, organic feel. Because I think the crowd picks up on that. You know what I mean? If if they see a a, a move happen, like if it's a if it's a dangerous move, I will show the guy how it's done just because I want to make sure that he's okay with it. But I don't like rehearsing matches. I hate going out there and going. This is what we're gonna do: A, B, C, D, E. You know, I hate that. That takes away that natural, organic feeling. Because, like, that crowd, you can rehearse the match all you want, but there's no crowd there. Mm -hmm. If that crowd's reacting to one thing, I like to be able to change it on the fly so that the crowd stays involved. If I'm just doing my little script, as you can say, and the crowd's reacting to something that's not in my script, the crowd's not going to get into my match. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, I like having it. I like feeling it. I like the feeling of organic. You know, I like the feeling of it. It's a natural thing. You know, and in order to have that, you have to have a crowd reaction. Mm-hmm. Talk. You mentioned it a little bit. Talk a little bit about this. Uh, well, what you could talk about about this new uh, deal with Ring of Honor. What can we expect from Beer City uh, Bruiser? Um, are you? Do you think you're still um, seeing more kind of you and Silas Young? Like, do you think it's you know, um, you will always want to be the tag team or do you want to kind of branch out? Like, talk a little bit about that. The cool thing about Silas and I is we can be a tag team and be dominant or we can be singles and dominant. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is, we're always going to be with each other. Um, he's right now at final battle. He's going for the TV title. Um, I will be in his corner. I will be seconding him. You know, uh, if he wins that, I will help him out. I will help him keep that title. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, we do have our sights on Tag Team Gold. We still want to get the six-man gold. We're still looking for that third person to join the little group that we have. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the cool thing about Silas and I. Uh, we call each other Milwaukee's Worst. Um, we can do singles matches and be okay with it, but if need be, we can also tag. You know, um, we don't care what it is. We just like fighting, <laughs> you know. Um as far as my deal and stuff, all that was said was just the money we talked about and the length. So it's for another year, you know, and that I'm not going to, they want me to preserve my body. So less indie matches, you know, cause mm-hmm. yeah, they want you to do indie matches to get your name out there and stuff, but they think I've gotten my name out there enough where now they want me to kind of be healthy, you know, no, absolutely. you know, and if I'm doing indie matches every weekend, I c- could possibly get banged up, you know, mm-hmm. for the big shows. And, you know, you mentioned that, um, saying that you're kind of more, like, established and your name's out there. I mean, social media is a big part of Pop Alternative. That's, like, my background. I mean, re- social media for wrestlers is, like, a game changer in many ways. I mean, um, a lot of wrestlers are kind of taking advantage of the fact that they can, like, you can find out about any and every indie show um, all the time. Whereas, like, you know, 10 years ago, that was the case. So, how do you think you're kind of... One of those wrestlers that's capitalizing on the uh, effectiveness of social media? Yeah, definitely. Um, the thing about social media is it's a blessing and a curse. Um, I like social media because, like, I can do, um, like, I, I've been trying, uh, playing around with an idea of going to, like, different breweries and stuff like that and trying local beers and, like, showing my reaction and filming it and, like, doing a YouTube channel, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's finding the tech and stuff like that. I've been slowly learning that because I'm not a tech savvy guy. <laughs> like I, I have my cell phone and that's it. My wife tries to teach me as much as I can. I have kids um, that try to show me, you know, Hey dad, this is what you got to do. So the, it's been a learning process for me, but after watching the success of like the young bucks was being the elite. I mean, they are, they are awesome guys. They are innovators. Um, they took that YouTube channel being the elite and made themselves superstars. You know, they, they accepted the social media, and I think they're the best example of how social media can work in a positive way for professional wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think every wrestler should have social media. I think you should have a Twitter account, Instagram account, and Facebook account. You know, I think you should be pumping all your shows. I think you should be taking pictures of where you're at um, and, and stuff like that. Now, the curse of social media is... It, it's always out there. So you could tweet a negative tweet about something and you think, oh, just so I'm saying about so-and-so, you forget that millions of people look at that. And that could be, you know, the death of your career. You know what I mean? You could say something that people don't agree with mm-hmm. and and instantly they run with how horrible of a person you are. They could also know? take things out of context too. Yeah, because it's all it is. If you think about it, if you're just tweeting or Facebooking, it's just words. There's no emotion behind it. Do you find it <laughs> strange, too, when a lot of wrestlers... Because um, I've seen some wrestlers that use their gimmick like on social media, and then a lot of people on social media don't use their gimmick. They're just they're like, just whatever. whatever. They're just tweeting... And, you know, a face might come off more like uh, in like WWE or Ring of Honor. Um uh, or actually the other way around, like a heel from Ring of Honor on social media might not show that as much, right? What like what do you think of that whole thing of people kind of staying at character on social media? Are you a fan of that? Oh, I'm a big fan of that. I think that if you're a wrestler and you have your character, you should have, like myself, I have a personal Twitter, I have a personal Facebook for my family. Yep. You know, and, and, and only on there is family. It's all that's on there is my family. Mm-hmm. 
then I have my, you know, I have my wrestling Twitter and and my wrestling Facebook and Instagram, and that's all just Beer City Brew. But what I as a Beer City Bruiser view things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the cool thing about Silas Young, if you follow him on social media, that's his character. I mean, but that's Silas. Silas is his character. But you know what I mean? Like, I love that guys do stuff in character. You know, if you want to have a personal thing and you want personal views, make a personal page. That's the cool thing about social media. I could, I could, you could create a million profiles of some, how many times you hear people getting catfished or, or, you know, stuff like that. Like you can make two profiles, make a wrestling profile. That's just for your fans and then make a personal one. Mm -hmm. And if you want to say all your personal views on everything, make it on your personal page. That way your fans aren't affected by it. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good way of putting it. And, And people kind of don't realize that there's kind of like, they don't really realize like that they could do that. Like, I don't, yeah. think, I don't even think that comes to mind. No. And, and, and you, you know, I, I've talked to young wrestlers and I'll be like, why did you post that? Well, that's just how I feel. I said, yeah, but you posted on your wrestling name. Like there might be a 10 year old kid who saw you at a show and now he's following you on social media and he just realized your feelings on this. Yeah. Oh, I never thought about that. Create a personal page. <laughs> you know, okay. if you want to, I, I'm not saying don't vent your frustrations and, and if you're not happy with politics or or a TV show or whatever, like you have the right. To, that's the best thing about social media and being an American. You have the right to voice your opinion, mm-hmm. but do it in a way where like you can separate it from your wrestling character. No, absolutely. You know, absolutely. guys always think about wrestling. And this is where a thing that I have, like, this is my job. This is what I do for a living. Yeah. This is how I support my family. Now, I'm not going to go in, if I was an accountant, I'm not going to go in Monday morning and sit at the water cooler and complain about how much my boss is a douchebag because of what he did over the weekend. I would lose my job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to be a, a customer service employee at Walmart, and I'm going to sit there and complain about this lady that came in and did something because I'd lose my job. Yep. You know? That's what a wrestler is. So I, I have to watch what I complain and, and, and voice my opinion about when I'm the Beer City Bruiser. No, absolutely. Because I could possibly use my job. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, um, no, great insight. And like I said, I love uh, having wrestlers on because, you know, you guys have so, so much experience, so many stories. So Beer City Bruiser, thank you so much for coming on Popternative. Um, we'll wrap up. Uh, where can people fi- uh, follow you on social media? On social media. Uh, on Facebook, I'm the Beer City Bruiser. Mm-hmm. On Instagram, I'm also at Beer City Bruiser. And Twitter, it's at BCB Winchester. Um, I'm always active on all of them. Um, come follow my my you know adventures. Uh, if you go to prowrestlingtees.com slash Beer City Bruiser, I have five shirts up there. Please buy them. Uh, ROHwrestling.com slash shop. You can get yourself a Beer City Bruiser cozy. Or just go to the events page and you can see where we're at, you know, um, over the next year. I mean, we got a lot coming up. Ring of Honors is getting bigger. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, and all the best. Uh, congrats on the new deal. Thank you so much. No problem. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. Be sure to follow Beer City Bruiser on all social media. All the links he mentioned will be in the description. If you like uh, this video, uh, you could uh, please leave us a comment, leave us a like, and subscribe. Um, it only allows us to... Uh, get bigger and make more episodes. Popternative.com is where you can find exclusive new content as well. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Until next time, this is Beer City Bruiser and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. <laughs>